Hey, I'm Jason. Today in the lab, we're going to be demonstrating the Benford Bolt. Ah! All right, so what is a Benford Bolt? And who's this Benford guy? What's he know? Hey, that's me. All right, so let's check it out. This is the Benford Bolt. All right, so this bolt has a built-in spring scale into it. And as you tighten the bolt, it's going to stretch this spring, and you're going to see it read the force as it builds up the clamping force, okay? So let's talk about the importance of clamping force, right? We, we know that a bolt needs to be tight in order to do its job. Let me prove that to you with this thing here, all right? So what if we just assemble the parts and run the nut down until the parts are closed, but we haven't really done any real tightening to this, right? We can see the load is about zero, but the joint is completely closed. If we ask this bolted joint to do something, to take some service load, we're gonna see this happen. The load's gonna come on and it's gonna actually overcome the tension of the bolt and pull the joint apart, right? So if we do this a hundred times, this bolt is gonna, the, the load is gonna go up and down and up and down, eventually causing this to fail, all right? So the solution to this is to actually tighten the bolt to achieve tension in the bolt so that we can respond to the service load that's acting on the part, all right? So now we've established two newtons of tension in the bolt, and we can see that when we put compression force, or we can put service load on the part, we can see that the load in the bolt is stable. All right, so we could do this thousands of times, and the bolt is gonna stay together, and this thing is basically gonna last forever, okay? Until we get to a situation where we overload the joint. Now, if we put four newtons of service load on here, now I'm in a situation again, the bolted joint is being pulled apart. So we go up and down and up and down again, we're gonna have problems with this, this assembly. So what's the answer to that? The answer is to tighten the bolt more. So we run this thing down and as long as we, we get our tightening above four newtons of bolt preload, we're gonna see that it's gonna be able to handle the service load, all right? So we get to four here and now I'm in a stable situation where the bolted joint is never gonna be pulled apart, okay? So when we're approaching a bolted joint problem, we wanna ask ourselves, what is the service load? How tight do I need to make this bolt? The, the low end of the tightness is determined by the service load, okay? And usually that's the, the tighter the bolt, the better, okay? But how tight is too tight, right? We have to fit in between those two extents, right? So how tight is too tight comes into the, the bolt itself, the tensile strength to it, and the compressive strength of the parts. All right, so basically we need to stay within the elastic range of the bolt. And in this case, it's at six. We start to, we start to get to the stop on this thing. And if we go any, any further, it's gonna permanently elongate the bolt, okay? So we have to live within this range between four newtons to handle our service load and six newtons, which is starting to create issues with the, with the strength of our parts or the tensile strength of the fastener. So that really answers the first question of how tight do we need to make the bolt and how tight is too tight? All right, so now that we've established how tight the bolt needs to be, how do we actually get it that tight? We're gonna use some kind of torque tool. So this is a transducerized torque tool. This is a power tool that's going to apply one newton meter of torque dynamically. There's a transducer in here that's gonna dynamically read the torque as we apply it to the joint. So let's build this thing up and see how we're doing. So we have a rubber washer. This is actually a high friction washer, and I expect the clamping force to be on the low side when our friction is high. So let's see whatever one newton meter will do to the tension in this bolt. It puts about two newtons of tension force on here, all right? If I were to repeat this test, I would expect the friction to be the same and to get a similar result. But what happens when friction changes, all right? If we take this thing apart, and apply a lubricant to this, all right? In this case, we're gonna take some hand sanitizer and put a drop of hand sanitizer under the face of the nut here. All right, we're gonna have enough difference in friction to see a different result with our power tool. So now the power tool is set to the exact same one newton meter target, but since we've got a lubricant on here, we're gonna see the results be significantly different in the tightness of the bolt, and in this case, I think it's gonna to be too tight. So there, we didn't even achieve our one newton meter of torque before the socket was pushed off. We're into the plastic deformation range of the bolt. So if you ever break a bolt during an assembly, the, the primary factor that's gonna cause that is a change in friction. That should definitely be what you're looking for. All right, so what's all this mean? We talked about the service load. 
It's super important to tighten the bolt to the correct amount of preload to handle the service load so that this thing can stay together and never come loose, right? We talk about the applied torque to the joint. The relationship between the torque and the bolt tension that we generate is dependent on friction. We have to be consistent with our friction. And if we adjust the torque setting to the friction, like we're about to do here, we can see that we're gonna develop the correct amount of bolt preload. All right, so there you go. We met our window of the right amount of bolt tension. And this is really a good demonstration so people really understand the importance of getting the right amount of tightness and how to apply that with a power tool. All right, so that's the Benford bolt demonstration. Hope you guys enjoyed it. There's a lot more things we can actually show with this. So, so it's really not limited to just these two explanations, but just wanted to give you a picture about what we can do with a device like this and how it can help teach people about what a bolt needs to stay tight. All right, we'll see you next time.